One of the other things I worked on uh, for the last year was um, when there's other political parties or other political um, groups that are passed cross sometimes because as libertarians, sometimes we agree with people that we don't always agree with. And, and on two or three of those issues is where New Approach South Dakota came, came in and uh, I reached out to them um, and, and asked them to, if we could kind of, because our, our paths cross at two or three issues that they support. And uh, so we're going to have a couple of speakers uh, representing them come up here now. Uh, you might have heard him in the news recently, uh, Mr. George Hendrickson. Everybody give it up for him. Uh, good evening, and uh, thank you for inviting us. Uh, I'm always a little nervous with public speaking, so just kind of bear with me if I stammer a little bit or get a little lost in my thought process. But uh, yeah, I've been in the news a little bit lately. Uh, I'm here for New Approach South Dakota tonight, though not for what I've been in the news for. But uh, you can ask me about that afterwards if you haven't seen the news. But uh, I've partnered with New Approach for a number of years now uh, when uh, I had a situation that kind of redirected my life. And so about five years, matter of fact, five years ago today, in just a few hours, my son Elia, or Elia, was born. Okay? And uh, tomorrow, five years from now, or five years ago, he was given a hep B shot. And at the time, we didn't know that he had a genetic uh, malformation in his SCN1A uh, gene, and it makes him highly susceptible to vaccine reaction because a lot of children with SCN1A mutations have a condition that can morph into something called Dravet syndrome. And it's a very rare syndrome. It uh, you know, happens to about one in 40,000 people. And uh, there's typically children that have Dravet have a, a intractable epilepsy. Uh, it's a very deadly form of epilepsy, different than just your, what would be your regular, you know, epileptic seizures that, you know, that, that maybe you, your brother had or a friend had growing up, you know, that wasn't quite deadly, even though I'll caution you that all forms of epilepsy are deadly. It's just a lot of people are horribly blessed that they don't die from it. Uh, so we experienced uh, some episodes where it looked like he was kind of holding his breath and turning blue. He's just a brand new little baby. We really didn't know what was going on. We'd rush him to the doctor. They didn't know what was wrong. It took about seven weeks before they realized that, that he was actually having a seizure, and uh, this, whole, this whole holding of the breath thing. And uh, from there, they started him on a course of phenobarbital at seven weeks old. I don't know if you know about phenobarbital, but we use a version of that to, for you know, executions in this state. Phenobarbital is a very powerful drug, and given to a very small human uh, for an extended period of time, it can cause very serious damage to that child. But then again, so can seizures, especially when you don't know what's causing the seizures. And so. We live with this, and the phenobarbital is doing its job. He starts to get a little bit better, and about the time, uh, it's it, around about oh, three or four months after he's due to have his first DTAP, uh, he finally gets into a position where we hadn't had seizures for about 30 days, because he was having clusters of seizures, where he would have you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seizures, and then he'd have a break, and then he'd have another eight, nine seizures, and, and these would come for three days in a row, and then we might have a break for about four or five days. And... Uh, so I entered the DTAP, and you know, and, and it was against my better judgment, but everybody insisted, and of course the doctor always knows best, so I gave in to him and everybody else that was putting the weight of the world on my shoulders. We DTAPed my son, and within 24 hours, my son's seizures are out of control and have been so uh, since. We've had you know, three, four, five different kinds of medications, nothing controls out of control seizures in Gervais children. Okay, uh, you've all probably seen in the news the stories of children that are having 300 seizures a day and, and, and they're uncontrollable. That's Dravet. It's also there's also a couple other uh, rare syndromes that are similar to that that encompass that same thing. So we're going through. Uh, we, we've now switched all of our care to Denver, Colorado, to the Children's Hospital because they are a very well ranked neurological hospital for pediatric neurology. And uh, we weren't getting very far in Sioux Falls because there, at the time, there were no pediatric epileptologists in this town, which are very specialized uh, style of neurologists. And uh, of course, Denver had a world-class one, and so we had gone there. We're undergoing the treatment with him, and something that was unique about my son was the, the way they track Gervais. 
they track it by your, your SCN 1A number and a haploid number that it's processed with. My son was apparently number one of one. They usually track it because they track what medicines kind of work and what ones don't work at all so they don't poison children. Well, my, because my son was one of one, they had no idea. He was the first one with his haploid number. They had no idea what to do with him. The good news is, is they had no idea what his outcome would be either. So it, we, could, we shouldn't put him in a box because he could get a lot better. He also could die, but he could get a lot better. So as we're going along, his seizures are coming in the clusters, and some days worse, some days are better. But we've now gotten to the point where they say, okay, George, we know you, you're not a big fan of having a lot of pharmacy drugs in your kid because he's just little. You know, and, and we're going to keep in mind, he's five years old just today. And so we're still talking three years ago. And uh, the, the, the doctor says, you know, if, if you want, the only other alternatives you're going to have, we're going to have to increase all of these drugs he's on. And the main thing he was on now at this time was he was on the phenobarbitals and the benzodiazepines all at the same time. And the benzos are, you know, horrible for little kids. Well, they're horrible for adults, but they're really horrible for little kids. And the, uh, I said, you know, you, we're either going to have to increase all of his pharmaceuticals to control the seizures, or you're going to have to try looking at going with a strict ketogenic medical diet and try medical cannabis. Now, I'd been a law enforcement prior to that. I, my dad had worked for attorney general's office. My brother's a police officer. You know, I mean, we were kind of a law enforcement family. Uh, this wasn't, you know, a real, you know, fast thought in my mind because, you know, I'm a product of state training, you know, marijuana is bad, right? It has no useful purpose, has no medical uh, use and a high probability of addiction. So the, uh, I go home though, it's my son and I'm a good investigator and so I'm going to investigate it. And so I spend, the, within the first day my mind is made up because I find some really good data from the Hebrew University in Jerusalem which has been using this as medicine and researching it since 1970. Okay, so these guys have the longest set of peer-reviewed medical uh, studies on cannabis. Okay, because in South in the, in the United States, you can't do it because the DEA won't allow anyone to do studies. So there weren't any uh, really that existed in our in, in our country. Two of the big things, well, the biggest thing was was that, that they discovered we have an endocannabinoidal system. Okay? Our body's made to process this plant. You have lipids all throughout your body that are made specifically just to process cannabinoids. Now, that doesn't mean that 3,000 years ago people were refining a plant and sitting in a cave smoking it, okay? They were probably eating it like lettuce because the, 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 the health attributes of this plant, as I continued my study, is, you know, is is incredible. I mean, we're barely scratching the surface of what this thing does, right? But once again, you have lipids all throughout your body made to process this plant for different ailments. So it's so it's very key that you understand that our bodies were made for this particular product. That that was the big determining factor for me. That's what turned my whole position on this. Uh, then just obviously in looking at, at, at the process. So I'm now in Colorado. I've moved there, I've done the things that I have to do for my son in order for him to be able to have medical card. Okay? Because I'm in a very serious position where I need him to come off of phenobarbital. Because he's been on it for three years, two years is really a bad idea, and I really want to limit the damage to my son because I love my son dearly. I don't want to kill my son by taking him off the phenobarbital either though. So I'm very careful where I step. I've gone, I've looked at where the medicine that I was about to give him is coming from. I've looked at the grow, how they do it, it's organic, they test the soil, what's their process of extraction. I mean, I'm really putting some time into this. I'm really serious about what I'm about to do to my son. So the first day, his first dose is, is about the size of a drop, it's about the size of a, oh, a long grain of rice. Okay? And giving it to giving that to him twice a day. By the third day, I have a son who before would have a little spinning toy in front of him, and he would sit there all day long, and he would just spin this toy, and that was what he did. That was his beginning of his day, and that was pretty well the ending of his day. By the third day, the spinning of the toy stopped. My son looked me straight in the eyes, and he engaged me. 
as his dad. For the first time, he recognized me standing there in front of him, and he wanted to play with me, not that damn spinning toy. At this point in time, we're just, as a family, we're elated, we're devastated. We're, I mean, the emotional swell of the roller coaster is second to you know, nothing. I mean, it's, it's even hard to explain. Uh, and, and the worst part is, is we're faced with the reality that we have to come back home. My time away is limited, and I have to come back home. And I can't bring what I just did back home with me. <laughs> And so we come back home, we go through our medicine changes, the seizures are coming, the, you know, the, now we're introducing on fee and more medicines and, and everything is, you know, it continues to rise. So we get to a point where my son with his Dravet, Dravet carries a lot of other little, little miniature problems that can come along the way, all right? And so... My son was the lucky kid who also developed a condition called ESES, which is Electric Status Epilepticus. And what that is, is it's a, it only happens to 0.5% of epileptics. So he's like the lucky one millionth kid because he's already got the condition that only one in 40,000 yet. And uh, what this is, is it's a super high electrical activity is happening in his brain while he sleeps every single night that is similar to a seizure, except it's non-convulsive. So he's, you know, having, he's having this electrical activity that's not allowing his brain to rest. So he's not retaining anything we're trying to teach him all day, every day. Now, keep in mind, my son doesn't walk. He doesn't talk. He, he still loves to play with his spinny toy, but he stops to cackle at me, you know, and everything else. I mean, he's, he's already morphed into a different kid, but he's, he's not quite like you or I ever were. And so... He, the, uh, with the status epilepticus, you know, we, we're, we're this electric status, yes, yes, we're now seeing that, you know, this, this is called, a, this is a turning point in children with Dravet, they can go through a neurological regression, and this is part of that neurological regression, because it starts destroying the brain, and they start losing attributes. In, in the rare case of when it happens to children who don't have Dravet, you kind of notice it when a kid's maybe four or five, and all of a sudden they can't pronounce words they normally could pronounce. And then they'll do an EEG and discover they have really fast electrical activity, and then they go ahead and try and treat them with the only known, two known treatments that they have right now. So it's, with, with my kind of kid, you don't know that because he's never talking in the first place. You don't know his, his, his brain's being just ruptured. And uh, so we're back out in Colorado. We're seeing our team of doctors there, including the doctors that, uh, that manage his medical cannabis card. And... They're telling us about another cannabinoid now that's just been discovered. There well, hasn't just been discovered, but they're just now using it for something new, which is called CBN. And what CBN is a very old age deteriorated THC. And so there's not a lot of CBN out there because most people don't let the plants get very old, right? Because they're trying to make money. So things get harvested as soon as they're ready. You don't let things age. But there are a couple of really good chemists out there that knew about this and have been cultivating this for some time. And we were, it was, we were recommended that some of the issues that my son was having with this electric, electrical activity from our other doctors uh, that weren't associated with the hospital uh, were, were using this for people with MS. And they were seeing incredible results in, with people with MS. So we started with a very, very low dose. And I'm there for three weeks. I've got a window of opportunity. I'm going to try this. And so... We, we, we start the dose for the three weeks. And by God, <laughs> if this kid just didn't start waking up more and more and more. And, you know, and so in this little time period we have, we once again got to see an incredible shift in our child. And, it, and, and of course, we get to the end of the three weeks. Guess what happens? Got to come home. And so we're on our way home, and you know, it takes we go back into our routine. The weeks come off, the ESES comes up. Pretty soon we're back in Colorado doing the emergency procedure for his ESES, which is they check him into the intensive care unit, and because uh, he has to be monitored for you know the entire time we do this, which we were there for. Uh, we, I think we were there for almost a week, 
and they basically pump him completely full of Valium to try and get his brain to essentially reset. Kind of like you're rebooting a Windows computer. And that's the least dangerous treatment for ESES. The, the, other, the other one is where they shoot him so full of steroids that he has to be on heart medication the rest of his life. So we, kinda, we opted for the death by Valium rather than death by heart attack. And uh, as he came off of that, it worked. Uh, you know, would I much rather have done that with CBN, something that wasn't going to take my kid's life? You know, that I didn't have that risk factor? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've seen it firsthand. You know, it's uh, you know, sometimes a little scary talking about these subjects in this state. You know, but if we don't start having honest conversations about what happens and what this what, what this incredible plant can do, we're going to lose the ability to have a medicine that works. And if we don't get it to a point of where we can have it legalized and deregulated in a way that doesn't get taken over by corporate conglomerates, we're going to lose it if we do that. I mean, we watched GW Pharmaceuticals walk into the state this year and waltz right out with a bill, you know. We've been hitting them for three years for something similar. An oil bill, CBD only. We weren't asking for the sun, moon, and the stars. But we weren't GW Pharmaceuticals. We weren't a big, fat corporation. I'm just a dad who loves his kid, but wants him to live. And I want everyone else to have the same choice and chance. Thanks. I appreciate you guys taking the time. Uh, Melissa Mentley is going to be up next. She's the head of New Approach. Uh, great gal. She's going to have a lot of information uh, for us. I'm going to hang around. I'll be here as long as I need to be for anyone who's got questions after the speakers are off. So, okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Melissa, you can go ahead and start coming up here. And while she's walking up, they, they do have all three petitions that he was talking about. They have all three of them right back there. So if you're a South Dakota voter, uh, you can certainly sign that up right now.